In this video, we'll be going over the first build, which is the IR turret. With that build, there's not much to it. The build itself is quite simple and straightforward, where it can get a little more complicated, which is the level up aspect of the hack pack, is when you add in the electronics and the robotics side of things, which also includes coding. I ran into some issues myself, and I've seen several other YouTube videos that have struggled with as well. Now, some of those aspects are simply because the Hack Pack subscription is new, and they're learning and developing as well as improving their side of things, which should help out a lot of these issues. And then there's just the learning curve of understanding how coding works, as well as electronics. In the end, the Hack Pack subscription should be fun as well as educational. Now, part of that education is learning some troubleshooting aspects because we always want you to kind of push the next level. You're going to have to learn something new. It might not always work the first time. So we get to learn from our mistakes, learn from what didn't work, so that way we can try and get it to work. So here's the IR turret, the build, as well as some of the challenges that I had in my own build. And in the end, we'll see how well it holds up. Now the build portion of the hack pack IR turret isn't that bad. It's pretty straightforward. You can follow the book or follow the video. The few things that I did find that can be a little tricky are the motors, how they fit into it. Uh, one of the motors didn't want to seat well. It actually popped out a few times. And I also noticed that the metal screws didn't really bite in to the, the wood cardboard pieces. Uh, so it didn't really sit very well. It didn't seem very strong or sturdy. So that's something that if you want to use long term may want to add some extra um, strength to it maybe some glue or anything else to make sure it holds tight moving on from the build portion getting into the code definitely is a little trickier than i was expecting i watched a few youtube videos on this so i was expecting some challenges um, knowing that safari does not work with their current IDE so far is definitely a big challenge for some people that are used to that. So stay, stay away from Safari. Uh, Google Chrome works and I believe Firefox is the other one that they support. So this is the part that I got lost in. After watching the original video, he doesn't really go into detail of how to connect it. He just says that it's going to connect, but it didn't. Now check the ports tab on the top of your coding page. When you plug the microcontroller in, a new option should appear with the name of your microcontroller. Click on it and the port button should confirm that you are indeed connected. So here are the tricks, the tips that you need to go through to make sure it happens. So first of all, they've added this new screen, this wait section, because they realize that there's more to it than just connecting it and it connects. So you have to walk through this whole process. So there's two parts to it. First of all, is you have to download the software to be able to do this. So as you can read through this, it tells you that, by the way, you have to get this new software, but there's another step to it beyond that. So it's not just downloading the software. There is this second video that you have to watch to make sure that you install the Arduino Create Agent. So once you get to this download page, you install for Windows, and it will give you the install aspect of it. After installation, it says it right down here and run, run the exe file as administrator. So when you put in the crunch labs here, you should be able to find it right away. And then here you just do the right click or on the right side, run as administrator. And here's what you want to find on the bottom right hand, where kind of you keep the open apps, the show the icons, you will see this hack pack logo pop up. And you can right click on it and it will kind of give you all of the details behind this. It is this second video that will show you the steps to download the software needed as well as setting it up correctly on your computer so that way your IDE 
can connect with your microcontroller. So at the end of the day, we did get a working robot fully functioning after some trials and testing of a few things that I did wrong and just missed with the coding aspect of it. With all that put in mind, it was a good build, it's a fun build, and definitely can have some fun applications when you get to enhance it. And that will be the fun part. Whether with the code or adding some extra electrical components onto it, so that way we can have some fun with some for say, example, a uh, monitoring infrared sensor or a proximity sensor or possibly even a light sensor that would trigger when to shoot or track who we should be shooting at. And that's our turret for you. Definitely a fun build. You can get some things done with it. And what is going on? What